Hello everyone, welcome to this interview time. So this is going to be for the subject of English conversation three. So this time we're going to be interviewing each other. So we have three questions for each student and uh, I have the first question. So I'm going to interview you, Monica. So I have these questions for you. So uh, the first question says, what would be the best way to give a piece of advice in your own words? Thank you, Angel. Yes, in my opinion, I start by acknowledging the other person's feeling and concerns. Uh, we need to show that we really understand the perspective and and the interest in and helping the people. And also, uh, we need to clarify and be clear and concise in our advice. And also, uh, we need to make sure that our advice is easy to understand for the other people. Absolutely. I do agree yeah. with you. Excellent. You. So the next question says, what do you think are the best factors to motivate employees to perform their best at work? Uh, for this, I consider that we need to recognize and appreciate the employees for their hard work and also for their achievements. And also we need to provide them uh, motivation. And also we need to like uh, do a gestures, like a free A's, awards or employee of the months and programs. Uh, this will be effective for the employees. And also we need to provide a uh, healthy work and uh, like uh, balance shows and the organization cares about employee well-being and this can increase uh, the motivation and reduce the burnout. Absolutely. Those are really, really good advices and really good factors. So the last question is about the last unit that we that we have and it's about the social media. So do you think that social media has changed the life of the people? Uh, yes, of course, the social media has been changed the way the people communicate and it allows individuals to connect with friends and family, share updates and maintain relationships um, in regards of geographic distances. However, it also comes with uh, challenges related to privacy, mental health and information filtering, which individuals and societies need to address. And the impact of social media continues to involve of this platform and their usage patterns and change uh, our life uh, a lot. Yes, absolutely. You are totally right. So thank you so much for these answers, Monica. So now it's going to be your turn, Jacqueline. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Monica, for answering uh, your interview questions. Now it's my turn. Angel, could you help me out with opening your microphone? It's I will be asking you some, a couple of questions regarding the unit. All right, perfect. Right. The first question would be if uh, do you think that uh, Feng Shu can be implemented in schools or companies here in our country in El Salvador? Yes, absolutely. So I have read that Feng Shu is really important nowadays. For example, they, uh, the way that you can arrange your room, they can they can do a lot of things for you. So mm -hmm. they can be implemented but we need to invest a lot of money to hire some experts on, on this on this matter so i have read also that the environment uh which you study can affect the way that you perform so that could be really good for schools because remember that if they are learning if they uh if they have something that is helping them to to learn better so you can implement it and you can you can you can perform better as well so that's why i'm i totally agree with that question Right. Yeah, you always have to think through about these things, organize it and see how much would be, you know, it's really important to invest in something that's going to be helpful for uh, the people in your country. And yeah, that would be really great. Now, my next question would be, uh, if do you think it is, it is important to have a good corporate culture in places like uh, schools, for example? Yes, yes, definitely. Because uh, pretty much the cultural, the corporate culture refers to the set of values, the customs or traditions that makes a company unique. So if we implement these corporate cultures in schools, they can they can be better schools, not only private schools, not only public schools, but they can do it 
anywhere. And not, all, not only just uh, schools for, for kids, I mean, they can they can implement that at universities or academies, so I don't know, because it has a huge impact on the organization's success. So if we implement that, so we're, we're going to be performing better, as, as I mentioned before. So yeah, uh, totally, that's, that's really important that the corporate culture, it, it's really important in all of the places and also can be implemented at, at house in your in your own house as well. Right, I totally agree with you on that. It's, you know, you should always think about what is actually, uh, you know, what is really important to implement in any place where you go, uh, not only at school, as you mentioned, but at your house. And you should really think what is actually uh, important. Sometimes we we tend to uh, put more importance in other things that are just like, you know, they're not really uh, worth it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And now my last question for you is, do you think social media has affected face-to-face -face communication nowadays? Absolutely. So, because due to the pandemic, so we have changed the way that we communicate. And also the interaction or the communication has been changed uh, several, for, for in the last couple of years as well. Um, so I have read a, a quote, a phrase that says that the horse is out of the barn. We're all addicted anyway. So that means that this option or this, this um, issue, let's say, has been changing nowadays and we cannot stop it. So yes, we have substituted and the communication has been affected. And with virtual communication and face-to-face -face communication. Because nowadays people spend more time on Facebook, on Twitter, or on any social media than communicating using their, their their voice. So that's that's something that we have that we have to take into consideration. And yeah, uh, absolutely has has been changed nowadays. So that's all I want I want to say. Right. It's like nobody even cares about like going out, having a coffee or something. Absolutely. And I mean, I get it. it. It's more easier communicating through Facebook. Like it's way more and more faster. But at the same time, sometimes you tend to like miss that that physical connection, right? Like being able to, you know, if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, touch hands, you know, <laughs> or give your your friend a hug. A human touch, or, right? Yeah, it's it's something that's missing there. I mean, I'm not saying technology is bad. It it's good. It has helped so much, but we're not using it the right way. Absolutely, totally. Yeah. Thank uh, you so much, Angel, for it. Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, Jacqueline, continue with the interview. Um, have you ever been in a situation where you have to ask for um, advice in indirect or subtle way? And how did you go about it, Jacqueline? Right, I remember that in the unit there was a lesson, a uh, listening session there between a person named Kirsten and uh, Steve. It's a really great example of this. Well. Uh, to be honest, when I have been in a situation like this and I want some advice and maybe the, the situation I'm going through is like a little bit too heavy or something really delicate, I tend to like try and build up some trust with that person, maybe get to know them a little bit more or, you know, trying to get a little bit more deep into conversation and ask uh, advice on something that's a little bit more lighter, right? And if I feel comfortable, then I would go ahead and, and uh, proceed with the most difficult uh, topic. Thank you so much for your answer, Jacqueline. And the next question, what is the difference between direct and indirect? And what are some expressive verbs to use when using indirect speech? Right, uh, direct and indirect speech can sometimes be a bit confusing. It's kind of similar, but it's it does have its differences. Uh, for example, I have been confused with that sometimes. Uh, the difference is that direct speech is when you quote someone's uh, exact words. Like, for example, if my friend said that her stomach hurts, she said, oh, my stomach is hurting. And I repeat that. She said, uh, oh, my stomach is, is hurting. Then I'm using direct speech. But indirect speech would be when I just mention uh, the main idea of what that person said. So that would be like, for example, she said her stomach hurt. So I'm still uh, saying what it, 
the, what that person said, but not with their, their exact words. Some of the expressive verbs we can use with indirect speech would be mention, uh, explain, question, inquiry, say, tell, ask, reply, etc. Okay, thank you so much for the examples. And, and how has social media changed the way we connect with others? What new vocabulary has emerged to describe this phenomenon? Right, as we mentioned before, it has affected so much. Sometimes we tend to grab onto the easiest way to communicate. As mentioned, it's not wrong. The thing is that we're paying too much attention to technology rather than spending time with our family, uh, paying attention to your work, to your homework or other important things, other activities that can help you physically, mentally and all that. And well, uh, one thing that we did get out of the whole technology thing and this type of communication is that we have learned some new vocabulary words like uh, DM, or that would be direct message you, uh, PM, sometimes we tend to say to that work, I'll PM you, I'll DM you. That's, you know, these, these are the type of abbreviations we normally use. Uh, another one would be like ASAP, as soon as possible. We just write that because we want to minimize the time that we spent there. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Jacqueline, for your answers. Um, this was our interview and thank you so much for watching. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you.